All right. Well, it is one o'clock and time to get started. Hello and welcome to today's uh, webcast, which is Transform Tuesday. For those of you who were with us last week, uh, that was the first in our series of these webinars, and we covered the basics of Alpha Transform, talking about its key features and benefits. Uh, we gave a couple of examples of how it could be used, um, and then we sort of talked about um, how to put together forms using the uh, quick input text method. And we also talked about things that would be coming up in future sessions. So now it is time for a future session. And today we're going to be talking about slightly more advanced form design, uh, including things like parent-child records, uh, if statements, and a few other things. And instead of doing it PowerPoint, we're going to do it live today. So I'm ready to get started. If you do have any questions, go ahead and type them into the questions box of the GoToWebinar control panel. And if I could ask a quick favor, if someone out there could let me know if you're hearing me and if you could see my screen, that would be great. If you could just type that into the questions box and just say, yeah, I can see your screen and I can hear you, that would be super. And I will wait for that to happen. because. Excellent. Great confirmation. Thank you very much for letting me know that. So let's get started. Um, hopefully most of you have gone through the tutorial by now to build the simple equipment inspection application. Um, if you haven't, then that's probably the first step that you should do once you end today's webinar. Uh, but today I'm going to show you a little bit uh, more advanced concepts uh, than are found in the introduction tutorial. So let me just go ahead and log into Transform Central. And this was the equipment inspection form. This is what you would have built um, using the tutorial. And let me move this window out of the way so I can see. And today we're going to cover some, some more advanced topics. So let's, uh, let's get started. The first thing that people often ask when they're building a new, I'm going to start a brand new uh, form, new form type. And we're going to call this Equipment Inspection 2. Equipment. Actually, we're going to call this Cable Repair. You'll see why in a minute. Now, again, I'm going to start with Quick Start Text. It's always a great way to get going. Um, so there are a few fields that I know that I'm going to want to capture. I'm going to want to capture the customer's uh, name, uh, their address, the city, their state, their zip or postcode. And as you can see over here on the right, it's created the fields for me here in this simple preview. Let's try to make this look a little bit nicer, though. This time I'm going to actually put in a heading, and you can do that by using the pound sign. And there are a couple different types of headings. There's a group heading, and there's a section heading. And the uh, and you'll, let me just show you each of them. You'll see them in the simple simple preview. So if I had said that this heading is called customer information, you'll see here on the right where my mouse is that it's now put it in bold. If I were to use double quotes, it makes it a little bit smaller. So a single hashtag basically makes it a, um, a group heading. And that's what we're going to do here. because These fields will group together. So now let's imagine that we're a uh, we're doing cable repair. We're showing up to someone's house and uh, we're maybe installing a cable box or putting in a new piece of wiring, changing out a cable modem or something like that. So the first thing you might have as an installer like that is uh, would be these fields here: customer name through zip and post. But then you'd want to create another section for the work that was performed. So we'll say work performed. And here we might say, uh, so there'd be a description of the work performed. We'll say type of work, type, if I can type, type of work. And I'm going to make that a list. And I could use this uh, set button over here in quick reference, but it's just as quick for me to type that colon to turn it into a list. And I'm going to say, we will say install, um, Modem, uh, let's say install box, um, install modem, and run cable. So now I've got a list here with three items. Now let's further imagine that while I'm installing this box, I'd like to keep, there might be multiple choices for the type of box that I'm installing. So I'm going to create a new field, type of box. 
and I'm going to say one of them will be TiVo. Uh, maybe we'll call that TiVo 6 DVR or 6 tuners. And we'll call the next one a standard box and maybe, or let's say TiVo 3 tuners and then standard box. TiVo 3 tuners and then say standard. And then on top of that, we also want to have a serial number for the equipment if it's if it's a box that's going to be installed. So we'll know that information for later. So I've got these fields here. And if I go ahead and save them, and I'm going to upload these changes, and I'm going to log into my phone here. And I'm going to grab, let's say, add form, refresh definitions. And let me grab the form that we just created, cable repair. So there's the customer information there, customer address, city, state, zip. And there's the type of work. And if I click on the type of work, I get a list box. And so I'm going to install that box. Now let's say that those other two fields, type of box and serial number, were not necessary if I was just doing something like saying running a cable. Those would be unnecessary fields, and I might not want to display them because I want to keep the interface as tight as I can. So what I would do is I would go back into the designer, okay, and I'd go and I'd edit this cable repair form. Now, what I showed you before last week was input quick start text, and that is a way of laying out fields by creating a list, and, and you've seen that. But once that happens, you get put into this view here, which is sort of the standard view of editing the commands. You can get here by clicking Edit Form Commands. You can also get here by double, I believe you can get here by double clicking on, on the uh, thing that you want to edit. You'll notice you're no longer in Quick Start Text. So let me show you what we're going to do. First of all, I'm going to go down here to the Type of Work field. You'll see I've got some options here. So here are the list items that I've entered. You saw that, and here's the type of work. That's the title of the field. But also here, see where it says field? This is the internal name of that field, and that's actually something you're probably going to want to customize. And you're definitely going to want to customize it if you want to integrate Transform Central with some sort of backend system. Saying that it's field six is not particularly helpful for you. So in this case, this because this is a type of work, I'm just going to call this type of work, and I tend to use camel case uh, when, I, when I name my fields. So now I've created that. Now what I want to do here is I want to take these two other fields, the type of the box and the serial number, and I want to make these conditional so that if, if the type of work that you select here is the install box one, then I want to show these fields. Otherwise, I want these fields to be hidden. So to do that, I just collect, click on these two fields here, then I go up here and I click the plus button, and here are all the, the commands. And I'm going to show you that list again in a second. But in this case, we're going to choose the if command, and I'm going to click the enclose button here. And now what I've done is I've created an if command, and <coughs> excuse me, an if statement. By default, it's it's just set to true. So this is where you put in the condition for the if statement. So right now, because it's set to true, these two fields are always going to show. If I had set it to false, those two fields would never show, but we want to have a conditional. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove where it says true. So we're going to delete that out, and I'm going to click on append field name. This is sort of a quirky thing I found on my browser, is I actually have to click this button twice. You might have to as well, so beware of that. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab the field that I want to use that if condition against. In that case, it's the type of work field. So I'll click on that. And I'll say equals equals because this is this is JavaScript. I know we said no coding. This is just a smidgen of coding here. So equals equals install box. So if that field type is equal to install box, then I want to show these fields. So let me go ahead and save that. And I'm going to push that back up online. And now that that's done, let me go and back to Air Server and let me show you how that works. So back here, uh, I'm going to add a form. I'm going to refresh form definitions because I've just made a change to that definition. You've got to do that, otherwise you won't, you won't see your changes. And I'm going to say cable repair. And as I scroll down here where it says work performed, you'll notice the only field I have there is the type of work field. But if I click on that and I click install box and I click OK, aha, 
you'll see those two other fields appeared underneath it. So that's the deal with if statements. If statements are extremely handy if, um, based on some condition, you need to collect some other information. A very common example of this is when you're looking at checklist items where they say, you know, for example, are there any electrical faults? And if you check yes, it's going to say, well, what is the electrical fault? You'll need to specify it out. If you click no, there's no reason to write anything in that line, so, so that, that line goes away. So that is the if statement there in a nutshell. Let's go back here to the back into the edit forms command. And I kind of want to take you through a list of the things that you can do. Now, if you remember back in quick start, uh, and I'm going to show you how to sneak back in here if you wanted to add some more quick start stuff. There's a limited number of things you can do. You can do number, phone, signed, integer, and all of these things. But you'll notice if is not one of them. Um, and another thing that's not part of that is a data group. And I'm going to show you, well, there's data group here, but I'm going to show you the, the proper way to do a data group. So I'm going to go back to, uh, let's cancel out of here. Let's imagine now that this type of work, um, the work performed, I might be doing multiple things once I show up to a particular location. So I might be installing a cable box, but I might also be running a cable. I might also be installing a cable modem. And for each of the things that I do, I want to enter in another child record into this particular cable repair record. So to do that, I'm going to create a data group. So what I do is I grab the things that I want in the data group. And in this case, I'm even going to take the if statement, because I want the if statement to work in the data group as well. And I'm going to say plus, and I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to say data group. And here I'm going to say enclose, which means it's going to put in a data group start and a data group end. Now, when you get to a data group on the phone, phone, and I'll show you what this looks like in a second, there's going to be a message which indicates what the user needs to do to add something new. So instead of saying add new item to group, I want to get a little bit more specific. Uh, add new um, work item, let's say. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. And I'm going to push those changes back up to the transform cloud. And I'm going to pop back over to my phone. OK, go back to add phone. We're going to refresh the definition because we've made a change. And we're going to choose cable repair again. And this time, where it says type of work, there's already one spot for me. So let's say I'm going to install a box. Boink. And I'm going to add a new work item. Wait a minute. Hang on a second. I'm getting a failure. Let me see if I've done something wrong here in the coding. Or if it's just that we've released a new version. <laughs> so let me find out what the deal is. Uh, let me take a quick look. Let's go back in here. And I have the data group there. So that all looks OK. Data group start, data group end. Interesting. For now, let's just pull out my if statements. So I want to show you how this works, and that might be getting in the way. So to do that, I'm going to click on that. I'm going to say minus, click minus, and now I have a data group start, data group end. I'm going to save that, push that back up onto the cloud, and Back to my phone. X done. Add form. Refresh form definition. OK. Cable repair. OK. Interesting. Oh, I, I see exactly what I've. <laughs> I see exactly what I've done wrong. I didn't enclose the right fields. That that's totally my bad. Let me go fix that. Cable repair. What I should have done is actually started this data group up here, up a level. So I have these up and down arrows for when I make a mistake like this and I put something in the wrong place, I can actually just pop it up a level. And now my data group covers all of the fields that I need. So I'm kind of glad I actually made that mistake. So you could see how to fix it. Let me push that to the cloud. 
And I'm going to pop back over to my phone. And we'll refresh definitions. Don't cry. There's cable repair. Aha, here we go. So now I'm going to add a new work item. I hit the plus button, and I have my three fields type of work. Let's say install box is one of them. I'm going to add another work item. And this type of work is going to be called uh, install modem. And I'm going to add another work item. And this type of work is going to be run cable. So now I have three child records that have been added. But now take a look at the design here. Um, you'll see that all these fields kind of work together. You kind of can't tell where one record ends and the other begins. In other words, it says type of work, type of box, serial number, type of work, type of box, serial number. It would be pretty cool if we were to put some sort of divider in between there, or maybe even just a blank line. So let me show you how to do that. I'm going to go back here and go back to edit form commands. And so I'm going to put at the end of serial number, at the end of the last group, I'm actually just going to insert, there are a couple of things we could do, but you could insert um, HTML, in which case you might put in your own HTML, like a horizontal rule, or you could just simply do a blank line. And I think we have a blank section here somewhere. Let me just find it real quick. Blank line. Okay. So a blank one is one way of doing it, but the other method that I mentioned is you could also do it as HTML. So let's, let me show you what HTML does. Put HTML there. This is my HTML text. So if I wanted to put in a, a line, I could just put in like a, a horizontal rule. That's sort of an old way of handling that, but I'll go ahead and do that. And we'll go ahead and save the commands. Click to save changes. And I'm gonna go back to my phone, and I'm going to go to transform, there you go, done, add form, refresh definitions, okay, cable, so I'm going to add a new item, and so as you can see, I now have a, a nice line in between, so if I do install box, it's my first one, and then type of work, install modem, and that line uh, that you can see, I'm actually going to move my mouse here, this new horizontal line that we added in with the HR, you probably want to style that. You might make it thicker, you might make it blue. You can do whatever you want. It's HTML, so you can use full CSS rules to make that work. Um, all right, so let me go back and show you a couple other things. Okay, so that is data groups, and we've covered fields and field names, which as I pointed out before, it's very useful to give your fields um, useful names uh, so that you can integrate it with some sort of backend system later on. Um, but the other thing you can do here on this screen is you can set whether or not the field is required or not. So if you wanted to say that the customer name can never be blank, you're just going to click on required field and that'll make it so it isn't blank. And let me see what else I want to cover. All right, so we've covered that. And the last thing I want to cover today is showing you how to use SVG um, groups, uh, sorry, how to use SVG icons when you're setting up your forms. So here I've said cable repair, and I'm gonna actually click on advanced. So in other words, I've gone back here, sorry, to the designer tab. I've selected cable repair, which was the form we were just working on. And under that, I'm going to say advanced features. And within advanced features, I'm going to set the color and the icon for the form. So click set color and icon. And here I can actually enter in an SVG file, scalable vector graphics file. I think a lot of you guys are developers and you're familiar with that. But let me just go ahead and pop over to a website which happens to have a whole bunch of great uh, icons that you can use. And that is, let me just hit plus, flat icon. Com. Highly recommend this site. So let's search for cable. Uh, let's say cable TV or something like that. And there we go. There's cable, cable. Let's see if there's another better looking, better looking one. Oops, it's taking me to a different site. Cable, 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 cable. Yeah, maybe I did like the cable TV one after all. Cable TV. There's the icon, 
and I'm going to show this as an SVG file. So let me just click on SVG, and I'm going to download that SVG file. It's going to remind me that I need to credit the developer, or I need to purchase the icon. So let me just download that SVG file, and let me show you what an SVG file, if you're not familiar with one, looks like on the inside. It's actually a text-based file. Let me just reveal this in the Finder. Oh, here we go. Downloads, cable TV, sign with monitor. Here we go. And I'm going to actually open this up in a uh, text editor, the one I prefer to use. Oops, move this out of the way for now. Is Text Wrangler. You'll probably use Notepad or something. It doesn't really matter which one you use. And this is the SVG. All I need to do is I need to grab from the beginning of the SVG tag to the very end of the SVG tag. There it is there. Copy it to my clipboard. And then when I go back into my browser to Alpha Transform, I'm going to paste that icon in. And I'm going to go ahead and save. And wow, it's gigantic. So let's uh, let's make it a little bit smaller. Um, and to do that, typically at the beginning of an SVG file, they put in a bounding box size. Here's the view box size. And it says the width is 305, oh, 0.06 pixels. OK, fine. Let's make this around 75 pixels, just for the heck of it. And we're going to save that. And there, that, that looks a little bit better. I could have chosen a nicer icon. I could also decorate it with different colors and things like that. But that's how you get an icon into your application. The nice thing about SVG icons is that they're really quite small. So keep in mind that you're going to be using this for offline use. You're going to want to have a small type of icon to handle that. Um, so that's about it. These are sort of short sessions. So we've gone over required fields. If then, we've gone over parent-child relationships and how to use SVG files and why you should label your field names. So that's actually, I think, all we're going to cover for today's session. And I'm ready to start taking some questions. So we'll start with the first one. Um, they're assuming that in data groups, you can use it to add multiple photographs or audio notes. That's the question. And that assumption is correct. You can, in fact, use data groups to have multiple pictures, multiple audio notes. And that's actually a really great case for them. You might not know how many pictures you might need to take of a particular piece of equipment, for example. So putting them into a repeating data group is a perfect example of that. Something else you can do is you can actually put data groups within data groups, if you wish. Uh, you may have uh, some need to actually go down to, from a parent relationship to a child relationship, down to a grandchild relationship. Um, so that's just something else that I wanted to point out. If you have any other questions, though, go ahead and type them into the questions box of the GoToWebinar control panel. And if not, then I have a few questions for you guys. In fact, I'm going to start asking them right now. Um, how many of you have started using or have started thinking about using Transform for a uh, real use case, for real life work? And if so, uh, if you could just quickly type in what that use might be into the questions box, I'd just really be curious to take a look. The other question that I would like to ask you all, if you wouldn't mind typing that in, is how many of you have gone through the tutorial? And if you have gone through the tutorial, say, yes, I've gone through the tutorial. I would like to see that. OK, that's great. Wow, one per oh wow, one person said they're interested in a mobile app for a cable installer, which is really very coincidental, which is great. OK. Um, and here's someone who's doing field collection for houses, including test data. Okay, that's great. And it looks like a few of you have gone through the tutorial. Wonderful. Thanks very much. On the subject of house inspection, um, yesterday I've been working on a sample form called Home Inspection Checklist. I'm going to double click on that. And this was taken from the Housing and Urban Development um, website uh, from the US government. And I actually took their form, which has got 290 questions. And then on top of that, some of them can be repeating. And I put it into Alpha Anywhere, which actually turned out to be, uh, in, sorry, into Alpha Transform. That turned out to be a fairly simple job because I had it as a PDF and I was able to paste almost all of the labels of all of the questions directly into the input quick step, 
quick start text, which gave me a huge head start. So I didn't have to type in all those field names by myself. Um, some of the things that I've done for that, though, is I ended up using quite a few if statements throughout the entire field. Um, for example, if um, uh, in this case, there was a question of, uh, as a as a tenant, is there anything else you need to pay for besides rent? So maybe you have to pay for electricity or for water or something, who knows? Uh, that was one of the cases where we used the if statement where it said, if other payments equals yes, then I'm going to ask them to specify what field they want, what uh, payments are, are actually required. Um, oh, this is great. Wonderful. Thanks, thanks for the feedback here, guys. Um, so next week, the only other thing I want to ask you about is what we should cover next week. I have an idea what I was thinking of covering for upcoming sessions is using transform with alpha anywhere. Uh, but I'm also capable of doing a demo of the alpha transform API outside of alpha anywhere. And then in a couple of weeks, we're going to have our Zapier integration uh, complete. And I'm going to be able to show you some information about that as well. If you guys have a preference of what you would like to see first from this list, just let me know. And I'd be happy to cover it next week. OK, I have at least a couple votes for working with Transform with Alpha anywhere. So it looks like, OK, uh, Transform AA first and then APIs. Good, excellent. Well, that's sort of the order in which we want to do it. OK, super. Well, that comes to the end of today's presentation, unless there are any more questions. Uh, if you do have any questions whatsoever that you run into with Transform, please send an email to TF, like Transform, TF Guide, uh, sorry, TF Service at alphasoftware.com. There's a team, including me and three other people, who monitor that email, and we're happy to get back to you and get you up to speed. So thank you very much for everyone who attended today. Thanks a lot for asking questions. It's always great to get feedback and to sort of see how this product is, is progressing. And I'm very happy to have you all as charter members. So hopefully I'll see you next Tuesday. Take care and goodbye. <laughs>